want to continue to have the standard of heart disease care we've had in this community and have it provided here and not in Kelowna, not in Vancouver. We need a better space to do it. Thank you for those comments. Um, I realize we haven't introduced one of the doctors, uh, Dr. Mark Lorry. Um, so I apologize for that. And if you could just wave this crowd, there we go. Um, and I will leave that uh, up to the doctors to explain uh, what Dr. Lorry does. And I'm going to hand it off uh, to you guys now. What Mark does? Should we say what he's supposed to do? Mark is here. Mark is a family physician in town. Do you want to say something, Mark? Okay. I've seen patients here and I wonder why I wasn't saying a word, so I have to. Uh, thank you so much for coming. I wanted to uh, express our gratitude. None of us knew we would see a crowd like this tonight. I mean, we hope we it's been a very short time that we've been mobilizing, and we're really excited to see how we can work together. Um, I graduated from Penn High in the, in the mid-70s. Uh, I have worked in Oliver. That's where I started in Okanagan. I've been in Penticton for a number of years as a family doctor. I've always relied on the Penticton Hospital for the care of my patients. I've seen its uh, complexity grow. I've seen the physicians of an excellent quality in my entire career. And I really uh, want to see this move forward. Um, we're going to need you all to support us, uh, to support yourselves. And remember, this is a regional hospital. It, it takes in eighty to 90,000 outlying uh, people. Uh, different communities. It's not just a Penticton effort. They all need us. I hope some of them are here tonight. Uh, we'll be reaching out to them and having their support as well as yours uh, in this uh, critical time. Thank you. Thanks, Mark. Just to add to that, we didn't mention is that we talked about the sewage, but when you look at the data, 95% of the care given to patients in the South Okanagan is given at home. We only send out 5% your care, even though the big tick item she knows when you go off for cardiology, when you actually look at the percentage of the care, 95% is done in the cell phone So my job is to um, hear the questions and give it to the appropriate person. It's smarter than me. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you very much for organizing this. And uh, thank you for your time. State your name, please. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Mary Ellen Mason. Um, I live here in Penticton. Um, my second question is, what else would you like us to do in order to get this moved forward and done? What can we do? Are you related First, to anybody in cabinet? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I can do lots of things. So. Who wants to answer that question? We need to speak to the people in Parliament to tell them what we need in our town. If you go to our website, that's prhtower.ca, or particularly regional hospital tower.ca, and you go to the link which says, how can I get involved? There are all the people and their addresses and their emails, their faxes and their phone numbers. <laughs> they need to hear from us. The email addresses, if you just click on it, it'll open up your article express or whatever email, then you can write away. We need to be in their faces as much as possible, please. All of us. Yes, I agree. And, and then my next question is, we have lost a lot of care on the maternity side. Um, we're no longer, as I understand, able to deliver babies under 36 weeks. Um, is that part of this plan that you guys are bringing forward that we're going to have that again, be able to deliver babies and have our nursery operating 24 hours again? So the answer is no, this is not part of this project. The answer is yes, we're working at that right now. The issues with that really revolve around uh, physician staffing, which we're changing, and actually um, Lori Mudlock is here with the Boston Hospital has sent a proposal forward now that we have three pediatricians and three obstetricians in town to get those resources back to open the nursery. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, I have a question that was emailed. Is this a fixed question? No, I have an email here. And okay, just 
making sure it's it not for me, I can ask for what work effort is the local health authority doing to put this number one interior health authority priority forward to the provincial government? Are they supporting this or are they using all their resources to support Kelowna? Not my question. I got a feeling I'm going to get that question. <laughs> Volunteers, I see for that. But the answer to that is that the simple answer is it is number one project. It has been the number one project. And I think it continues to be. You, you've heard the chairman of the board state that it is the number one project they're doing. You're asking me what are they doing publicly? They're doing everything. Is it good enough? Like we've got the thing that we have to do it. I've been around long enough to know that if we don't do it, that means us and you. These guys are like me. They don't like to get up here. This is not what we do good. We do better telling you what to do on a one-to-one -one basis. This is not good to get up in front of people and have to answer questions. So yeah, I think it's the number one project. The CEO says the number one project. But my thing about it is if you don't get up and do it yourself, it won't get done. Do you think they're really going to be any different? 
the politics is politics. I, I think this should be about politics, but that isn't how the world works, and so we have to employ it as best we can. We've got a, a good project. It's a sound thing. We, the budget thing we showed, Penticton tries to balance. There's a better job of balancing budget than any other hospital that I know of. You know, and I've worked in a lot, and that should be rewarded. It goes back to saying, don't reward failures, reward success. With the I need to successful patient, <laughs> one that were surgeons, one of your good ones, David Kincaid, he arranged to get me into Kelowna, I had a stress test, and very shortly after that I was on an airplane going to Vancouver for a quadruple bypass, and it worked, and it worked very well, so I now have a chance to thank him publicly for what he did for me. <laughs> I'm Merle Kindred, and you're requesting questions. Uh, my question is, why are there two names missing on this list? Um, please write the following individuals, tell them you need a capital investment in your local hospital, but I'll supply you with the answer. Uh, we can also add Adrian Dix, adrian.dix.mla, and then use the same legislative um, URL that you have on the, uh, the current government's <coughs> listing. And also the health critic for the NDP is Mike Farnworth, Mike.Farnworth, uh, and then go on with the same ending to the um, email address. And that would be another way to, um, why don't we have the health critic for the current government also um, understanding the issues that we have here. And I also have a brief story. Two and a half years ago, friends came from Ontario to visit briefly in Penticton. And there was a medical crisis, and um, my friend had to go to emergency. It was a life and death situation. Uh, the man is a, a physicist. He's world-renowned. And he was uh, he's a member of the Royal Society of Canada. He was given excellent care by physicians at Penticton Hospital, but he was in an area that was just curtained off with another half a dozen people. And fortunately, when his hospital gown gave way, he was still wearing his undershorts, so I didn't have to look at the butt crack. But um, when his physician in Ontario received his medical report from um, Penticton, said it was the most thorough diagnosis and treatment that he had ever seen. So kudos to the doctors of our hospital. Well, we really Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Cyril Suarez. I'm a resident of Penticton for 28 years. The best province in the world, BC, we had the best staff and the best doctors that can do the job. And so happy to have you guys there. Also, uh, another question. Where's our politicians? Where's our members here tonight? I invited all of them by email yesterday. Our, our MLA is in Victoria. And the and Premier. Our uh, federal, even though either he goes to a federal hospital or a private clinic. No. Two of them responded that Parliament legislature well, was opening so they couldn't come. We can rank this war, we can rock this place. <laughs> You know, it takes everybody together to be a team. We have the right stuff. We have the best people here. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Chief, it'd be nice to have some questions. As chief of staff, this is quite good because usually what I get is all the complaints. <laughs> but not all about me, but some of them are. Go ahead. I'm going to get a complaint right now. I believe that the doctors and the staff we have here in Penticton are the best available. I honestly believe that no matter how hard you try, or anybody else tries, we are not going to get a better and more dedicated staff than we've got here. I don't live here. I live in all of them. My doctor is here. Now, my question is, why in the hell have you waited this long to have to put us into a spot that we're in now where we've got to fight to get this hospital rebuilt. Why have we waited this long? Why was this not done 
10, 15, 20 years ago. Who wants to? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> let me address this. Because, you know, we, we're, we're, we're trained to be clinicians. We're not trained to be managers. And we're trained to treat patients and try and make them better. And most physicians avoid things like this, like the plague. Um, and the fact is that we're too nice down here. And, and I, in my IH job, I call this my, my haven of peace and tranquility in the South Okanagan. That's because we don't make a noise. We just sort of buckle down and get on with it and cope with the situation that we have and then try and you know, tweak the, a little bit of efficiency out of it. And to, to then, so to take an example, we, we need to learn from some other communities like Vernon, and it's all about politics, as we've been saying. We need to make a noise, we need to be heard. We've stated the facts. Um, the facts aren't good enough. Um, we have to be political, we have to be loud, and we have to get the attention of senior government because that's the only way this tower is going to be built. Um, I'm an emergency physician, and I'm supporting this project. 
and it doesn't include emergency. So how do you think my part is when I go to work to talk about know, But the reality is that the, the, when it's just emergency, the, this is what I think as an emergency physician. On emergency, she works in the lab. None of us are gaining anything personally from the practice. We're actually getting trumped on by our peers. Like, why aren't you getting a new emergency? And the other, I think this is going to help the Crestal Hospital in a different way. It's where we need to go. It's sometimes you can't worry about the garbage in front of you. You have to think of where you're going to be in the future. The other answer to that is when they move out of the old facility, there will be space there. So in the future, there can be plan change emergency. The whole issue you're really talking about is inpatient beds and how efficient it can be. If we can be more efficient with the surgeries and get people through the hospital, then we can be more efficient in the use of beds. The whole province is going to need more beds. This is why we brought this project forward. This is capital costs. You buy the garage and it's done. You don't staff the garage. We're going to use the same staff. There's not ongoing costs. And that, that's what the government has proposed and said that's what we want. One time cost and other things we can work out later on. That's why we offered this project and they said, oh, it's just excellent. But sorry, politics tell us we should build a parking tower on Kamloops or whatever. Don't get me going there. Thank you. Oh, God, not a comment. <laughs> My name's Nori Conway. I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor. Um, I and my family. Especially my parents have had many trips to uh, the hospital and have had wonderful, excellent care by many of the people in front of us as well as others at the hospital. Um, one of the questions that I have at the age I am is looking forward to, I had, I should say, not looking forward, uh, but knowing that I will someday need the care of these wonderful people in the communities. And some of the conversation I heard a bit in the night was about uh, seeking other doctors and entertaining them to come to our community. And with the skills that they have, how are we going to welcome them to, with the abilities that they have and expect, and we want them to use and share with us, if we don't have a facility for them to come to? We're not going to be able to entice people to come here, as beautiful as Penticton is. It's not the, it's the only reason people would come willingly to work here. We need them to have a place to be able to practice the craft, the craft that they have been skilled and trained to do and to share with us. So let's get going. What else can we do? Do we want rallies? Do we want parades? Do we want, you know, speakers? What do you want us to do there? I think this is yours, Sarah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm loud. I'll help. So is Sarah. That's why I picked her.
Take more of the forms on the way out that you sign. Give them to your neighbors and your friends. Pick up the email addresses and bombard them with comments that show we're serious about getting this. And then we'll see what happens, whether we're funded at the budget, which is coming up in February. And if not, then we go to stage two.
on either side of your stretcher for five days. And that was not fun. But what do we do? Yeah, you want to do short-term stay, you know, get them in, get them out. But I'm not one of those kind of patients. I usually stay about five days at the minimum. So the answer to that is not simple. We're all aging, we're all taking longer to do. This project itself doesn't directly affect that, but I think if you run these things efficiently, guess what? There's more money to do other things. And the more next step is what you're talking about, is the pits. Well, um, the last time I was in rehab, one side of the rehab unit is beds, and the other side that used to be beds is offices. Why don't you move those people out of those offices, put them somewhere else? And open up beds. That would be a great idea. The ambulatory care tower would be an awesome spot. The third floor of the hospital, when I came here 15 years ago, there was Med South and there was Med North. And Med North then, uh, there was 30 beds there, they then transitioned into the transition unit. And then half of that closed off, and they basically auctioned off to the highest bidder. Um, various departments uh, vying for that uh, land, and half of it ended up turning into um, ambulatory care recovery, and where infusions are given, and the other half became the respiratory department. So if you actually create this ambulatory care tower, there's a whole patient ward there of uh, bed space available to take over. Likewise, if you get rid of ambulance, another part of ambulatory care, there's an enormous part equal to the size of the emergency room for them to expand into. Once you move and consolidate all of these outpatient diagnostic facilities and you move the ORs over, we can actually create more space, turn people through faster, and God willing, maybe even create some more beds. But that also involves operating costs, and operating costs are very different than 